Well, here is part two of how things fit together in my English Tudor house. We came in from that front door yesterday, or at least that's where, not yesterday, but a couple of days ago, and that's where our tour began. And then a lot of you asked about this area, which is the small hallway that goes upstairs. So what you would see immediately upon walking through the front door is this dried flower arrangement of Terra hydrangeas from Southern Living Plants. And then Stuart, if you don't mind just rotating a little bit to your right, this is a leaded glass cabinet that was original to the house. It kind of matches the one that's in the morning room and it's where we keep our stereo equipment and things like that. And there's storage in here and it's a built-in. And again, all of this was here when we bought the house originally. And then this goes upstairs and there's a little landing here. And this is an Arrowhead collection that was, was put together, assembled by my husband and his grandfather. And as I said earlier, he is kind of an anthropologist and archeologist at heart. And so that's really special to them. So this is how we get upstairs. So let's go. Well, if some of you were wondering if when my boys were little, they poked their little heads through those rails to look into the living room when to see if Santa had arrived or not. Yes, they did. And I have many pictures of them at the bottom of the stairs when they were littles looking for their treats and their gifts and their stockings. And those pictures are some of the ones that are most precious to me. So there's a small landing at the top of the stairs. It's a little gallery wall of family pictures. Um, sometimes I think when somebody says, oh, I'm part of a large family or whatever, that's kind of an abstract thing. So just so you'll know, I really am part of a large family. And when I allude to different family members, um, this is an older picture, but one that we took when my folks we're still alive in our Indiana home. And as a matter of fact, this morning, I talked with my oldest sister, Beth. She lives in South Korea and we Zoomed this morning. So yes, I, am, I do stay close to most of my family members. Well, actually all of them. And we, we may be a large family, but nevertheless, we do remain in touch real regularly. And then this, I do wanna show you because it's something that I'm thinking about getting back into. There there was a period of time when I was in my 20s that I did lots of needlepoint and I haven't done a lot of needlepoint recently, but this is a canvas that was gifted to me by a friend of mine and it is a rendition of my first home that I bought when I was still single. It looked to me like a mini Monticello and she converted that to needlepoint canvas and I needlepointed it and it is one of my precious things that I that I would probably save in the event of a fire. So that's where I lived when I met my husband. So when you come up the stairs, there is just kind of a long, narrow hallway. And then you guys have seen my bedroom before. Once you get upstairs, the woodwork is painted and it was painted when we bought the house. So we just continued with that. Uh, again, if I'm being redundant, because some of you have heard this before, I apologize, but we have lots of new subscribers. So we built in these bookcases. They were not original to the house. And when we first bought this house and moved in, this was not our bedroom. This was a TV room, kind of a family room, and our bedroom is, um, was what is now my office. But I have always wanted to have a library bedroom, and I saw a picture in a Southern Living magazine of just this type of bedroom in Charlottesville, Virginia, and I fell in love with it. And I already had the built-in bookcases, so this just turned out to be 
just a wonderful solution for us. There's a dormer closet over here that is the window that you see that's just at the apex um, underneath the gable of my front door. And it's just kind of a nice little closet where we can put the, the, the less attractive things of life. We have to sleep with a fan on, and there's my question of the day. Do any of you have to sleep with a fan on at night? Do you need to have some, okay, Stuart's pointing, Stuart's pointing to himself. You have to have some kind of white noise. In the air too. In the, in the air too. I think it's a lot of men need, need to have that, or maybe I'm being sexist there, but I, I just know that a lot of people like to sleep with a fan on. They find it soothing and wonderful white noise. So that's my question of the day. It's kind of an odd one. Do you guys like to sleep with a fan on? And if not, do you have some other kind of white noise that you like to listen to at night that comforts you and helps you fall into dreamland? So, um, so let me think, I've, I've showed you this before. It's a faux fireplace. Um, the painting over the mantel is from is of Canyon de Chez, and I apologize, I'm not sure who the painter is. Uh, my husband could tell you. This is one that he had, or we got shortly after we got married. But it's it's we love the Southwest, and this is a Southwest painting, and I love it. And and. Practically everything, well, with the exception of that one picture frame, all of these other things on my mantle were thrifted. Um, they came from Goodwill. So I love them, and let's see. Okay, not that you guys care, but there is a picture of me. My husband and I, we honeymooned for three weeks in Tanzania, and there I am standing on the banks of the Rufiji River, I believe, or it might have been the Indian Ocean. Yeah, very tan with... Lot, I didn't get nearly enough sunscreen on. Mm -hmm. So, and that is, that's my husband's family. My husband's dad and his older brother, Johnny, and his grandfather. Oh, and lest you think that I'm, I'm you doubt my veracity, here is a picture. This was way, of, obviously, before digital photos or anything, but this is a picture of an elephant charging us in the wild and then a bunch of wildebeest that were coming down the savanna in Tanzania. It was in the Salu Game Reserve. And here is Hubs, uh, my, my Hubs Clark Gable at the time. He looked just like Clark Gable, I thought. So there you go. Um, so that, this, is, this is our bedroom, and it goes into, into the office. Uh, the, I, I may have mentioned it to you before, but this is a wonderful way to reuse, recycle, repurpose. And I had this bench made out of an oriental rug that my husband got me for one Mother's Day. And when he bought it, he bought it at a local antique store. It had great big holes in it that we were able to very strategically hide underneath the furniture. But when I wanted to put sisal rugs downstairs a long time ago, I made this. I made this bench. And again, it's one of those things that's just really a pride of mine, a joy of mine. Um, behind you, Stuart, these, these prints I got at Mockingbird Manor. Many, many years ago, you guys have, Stuart, let's put a link to shopping at Mockingbird Manor. I got those many years ago and I just love them and I love the color palette and I like mixing the things that are a little bit more contemporary with things that are, that are old. One of my new, my, my kind of new obsessions, you guys, Stuart, if you don't mind panning, panning the bookshelves, I, I love baskets. I, I have a basket obsession and I love them really in any shape or form. And recently I've become kind of obsessed with these flat woven baskets. They're made in Vietnam. And actually I got these off of Amazon, but they are made in Vietnam. They come with a card that talks about the story of them. And they have slightly different patterns, but I love their, their kind of graphic sensibility. I love the, the black and light colored contrast that they provide to the bookshelves. And they're relatively inexpensive. And I think it's a nice way to get that kind of, um, oh, the kind of punch that I want for, for my bedroom, which is kind of a, um, oh, maybe 
British colonial kind of look, but that speaks to parts of the world that has that my husband and I have have visited. So obviously things that speak to our kind of international travel that are that are important to me. I also have a, a number of things from India because my son lived in India for quite a long time. So there you go. That is this part of the room. You guys might recall, if you go back and look at a previous video, the long sofa couch, wicker sofa, excuse me, sofa table that is now in my living room. That used to be up here and we moved it downstairs. And when we moved it downstairs, I relocated some furniture that I already had over here. And I love these little antique chairs because they're good. And when I need additional seating at my dining room table, they're lightweight and I can take them, I can take them downstairs. And then if you kind of look through there, Stuart, you can see that that's, that is the top of the top of the stairs. And then you guys have, have, seen, um, have seen my office this painting is this means a lot to me and my husband got it for me one year for mother's day and let me think if i can get this story right this is a painting of a woman that was that i believe was alexander calder's mistress alexander calder if you remember back to the 60s and your your art history class he had those fabulous mobiles and things like like that that were that were very popular and very reminiscent of the 60s alexander calder and this was this was his mistress and and i i really don't know who painted it but that was the story that my husband was told when he when he bought it for me and he bought it for me as again a mother's day gift because he 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 knew that i would see the resemblance between this person and my first mother and he got that for me so that is very very precious to me and one of those things that in in the event of a fire i would grab and take with me we do have a tv in our bedroom but i have to say it doesn't get used very much we we're not big tv watchers but i do like to have it there in the event we and actually sometimes when my kids come and stay when we're not here they'll take over the master suite the other thing is when my mother-in-law was still alive and she used to come visit uh, visit us she would have the master suite and she always had to have a tv in her room so that's another reason that we had a tv in the bedroom so at any rate there it is. And Stuart, why don't you show the pretty view from my front yard now? And you can kind of see the contours of the bed lines of the flower beds in front and see how it kind of fits together from a bird's eye view. Stuart, so good, you guys. You know that expression that Ginger Rogers did everything Fred Astaire could do only backwards and in heels? Stuart does everything I can do only backwards and in tennis shoes. <laughs> Isn't that right, Stuart? Correct. Okay, now Stuart, a lot of people have asked, I know you don't want to be seen, so that I, I, I respect that. Hubs doesn't want to be seen on camera either, but a lot of people have asked if I would interview you. <laughs> So that's entirely up to you. What do, what do you think? We could possibly do that. Possibly do some of that. Um, <laughs> for those of you, if you're new to, to this channel, Stuart is my photographer, my business partner, and my good buddy, and we've known each other for years, but he is not my husband. Uh, so again, you guys, I apologize if you've seen this before, but this is my bedroom. We did put in the bookcases when we bought the house and the storage below it and this is where lots of my topiary live especially in the winter time because it gets great southern sun and most of my collection of of gardening books is up here and i do refer to them quite frequently and a lot of just the prints and things i have in here are of just images from my garden books or images that have illustrations that have meaning to me. This is a picture of my first mom, and this is a picture of my dad. So I, I have those. And a lot of you have asked me about what's my secret to growing orchids. And my secret to growing orchids is that I just buy them when they're fresh and they look beautiful and I water them about once a week and I give them bright indirect light 
And I've had these, gosh, Stuart, how long have I had these now? Maybe almost two months? It was a while the last time you asked me that question. Yeah, yeah so I'm going to say almost two months, but they, they look beautiful. And in the morning, I sometimes light these candles and I'll, I do my meditation in bed or in one of these chairs here. And the orchids just look beautiful. So I've had them for a long time. So they're a great investment and a lot longer lasting than if I, than if I had cut flowers. Once they quit blooming, this is one of those things that is just a very a very personal thing based on how you garden both outside and inside. I don't really, I don't have a greenhouse and I don't really have room to babysit a lot of plants once they get out of bloom to babysit them and nurture them and, and raise them so that they will bloom again. So typically what I do once they finish blooming, I do two things. If the foliage still looks really, really wonderful, this is a great tip, you guys. I will sometimes cut off the spent bloom, and then I have a couple of silk orchids that look so realistic. And then I will just take one of those faux silk orchids, and I will put it in place. And you really kind of can't tell. So then it's part part fake, part real, but it also extends the beauty of that plant for a long time. And there are some orchids that are so realistic, you would never know that they weren't, that they weren't alive and, and growing. So that's kind of what I do. Once they, they just start looking a lot less than their best, I have some friends who do have greenhouses. Okay, now listen. So this is so, this is so funny. Stuart is trying to be so careful about how he steps because all, my old floors just really, really squeak. And it's, you know, there's no, there's no sneaking out of the house. <laughs> When you're a teenager or in junior high and you're trying to sneak out of the house or back into the house at night, there's none of that because the floors just squeak, <laughs> squeak way too much. And they will, they will give you away every time. So, uh, so there is that. I, Stuart, I know we will be asked again. So let's put this link. This is a long, narrow console table. It comes in three different finishes. I got this off of Amazon, and it was only like $130. So many of you asked me about it. So we'll try to put the link again. And the, the desk, I sound like a broken record because I've said this before. The desk belonged to my grandfather. And then, uh, oh, I did want to show you this. So this is the, my bedroom is divided from my office with French doors. And I did have, le I did have beveled glass put in these French doors because I love the way it looks. And I've always thought that this would be a brilliant setup. I, I don't know why I didn't do it when we first moved in when my boys were little because it, it seems so obvious to me and I don't know why I didn't do it. I think I was kind of talked out of talked out of it because I wasn't confident enough in my own in my own design decision making decision making then. I was just trying to learn how to be a mother. But this would be a brilliant setup if you have a baby because I, I've always thought this would make a wonderful, wonderful nursery and then you would have the master bedroom right attached to it. And I've always thought that would be a brilliant setup. But I like this, I like this setup too. Uh, but here I wanted to show you this because this is one of my plant towers. I think I alluded to it the other day, off of QVC. They're back in stock. I, hopefully they're still available, I'm not sure. We, we will check, but I'll put a link. But then I just had an extra piece of round marble that my husband found in an old showroom of his, and so it just makes a wonderful little side table and portable, so I can move it from here to there or inside to outside in the garden. Um, okay, so th this will be kind of quick because you probably aren't that interested, but it used to be that this office here stopped back here against this wall. And I had a tiny, tiny little closet, which is now my accessories closet, and that was the closet that belonged to this bedroom. There was a really long, narrow, narrow, very inaccessible closet. So after we lived here for about, I don't know, 
20 years, we finally redid the master suite and we took bumped this wall out. I had wonderful craftsmen who were able to replicate the coved rounded ceiling that was original to the house and they were able to recreate that on this wall. And then, so usually this is shut off like this. So those of you who live in new houses might find some of these kind of old house quirks kind of interesting. So then this can be completely closed off. And when it's open, then it opens to my closet. And this is my closet, my husband closets and uses the bath down the hall and I did clean it up just for you guys this is where I have all my boots and everything and you'll notice that I did take your suggestion and I got a little space heater for in here because this is an exterior wall and it gets really cold in here so at someone's suggestion whoever it was I appreciate it I did get a tiny little space heater to put in here and I since I have rediscovered ironing I now have my ironing board in here and my iron in here and this is where all my garden boots and everything are and yes I have way too many clothes but it's um, but a lot of them I have had since I was in my early 20s. And, um, but they, they do cycle in and out. And most of them are thrifted. Okay, so there's that. And then right across from that, and this was, this was designed by my husband and I. And then across from it, if you haven't already seen it, directly across from it is my accessories closet with the slot wall and all of my costume jewelry and everything. And some of you wanted to know if it was still neat. And yes, it kind of is still neat. I can still find stuff. So <laughs> that was one of my winter projects. And then I'm, you really, I'm sure have no interest in my bathroom, but this is my postage stamp of a bathroom. Not one of those great big jacuzzi filled um, bathrooms that some of you, some of you might have. It's very, very tiny, but it's, it's mine and I love it. And it got an update. So, so there you go. Okay, so that's, that's the master suite. So this, I'm going to be very respectful of my husband because um, he, he, let's just say he likes to live in a carefree kind of way. And he's not quite as neat as I am. And he, and which is one of the reasons he's at the end of the, <laughs> at the end of the hallway. He can live his life his way. We can sleep together and then I can live my life my way in the master suite. That'd be another question. Let me know how many of you guys do that. So this is just a long, narrow hall with these interesting kind of openings. I can definitely see these need to be dusted. This is an area I don't. I don't come down to this end of the hall very often, quite frankly. Um, this is one of these, this is probably kind of dark. I'm sorry for that. But this is one of these old house features. This is where the telephones used to be. And then there was just a little um, cabinet down here and that was where you kept your phone book and things like that. And also I believe somehow the doorbell was connected to this. So you could hear the doorbell through this. I'm not, I'm not really sure on that. This is my, my husband's office. It's where all his closet is. It's where all of his clothing is. It's where he does some of his business, la, 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 la. And, and that's his spot and I will respect not showing it. This is his bathroom and I will respect not showing it. It is still pretty much original to the house with the original tile and everything. And this, this room is also kind of a work in progress. You can see, I can see that Hubs has been in here. Um, this is our guest bedroom and it's a, in a little bit of a state of turmoil because my, my son Johnny was home over the holidays and we're still kind of going through a lot of his books and things like that. So there's tubs of books around here. Let me straighten this because this, this bothers me. This relates back to a question I had. Do you guys sit on the bed after you make it? And I don't, but Hubs does. So there, now I've got straight cushions. I do love these old metalized quilts and things. It's kind of one of my signature things that I like to have in my home. The, the, this is probably my, uh, my only real major concession, I guess, to femininity is this pretty Villeroy Bach wallpaper. And when we moved into the house, uh, 
32 years ago and we did some work when we first moved in. I selected this wallpaper and I really do still still love it. And it's kind of dark in here right now, but this gets this this room gets absolutely beautiful, beautiful morning light. And there's a couple of small closets in here and another piece of wicker. You guys know I love wicker furniture. I had a, a piece of bevel glass made for the top. And this, by the way, is from Dulles Glass and Mirror. And this is kind of interesting because both this company, Dulles Glass and Mirror, and also the slip cover company, Needles and Shears, they both contacted me recently saying that some of you have contacted them <laughs> um, about ordering some things. So I can highly recommend them. They do great work at a great price point, even if you're having to ship it in. So that's pretty much it. There's another closet here. Um, that right now has has is mostly stocked with my children's books and things that they had in their nursery. This used to be the nursery when they were wee ones. Um, so that's pretty much it. Stuart, have I forgotten anything? But that's how it, it fits together. Some of you may ask how how large my house is, and my house is about about twenty nine hundred square feet. There is a basement downstairs, where, which you guys have seen, which is where I work out. And then obviously there's a detached studio outside, which you have seen before, where we shoot lots of QVC things and some of my projects. But that's how, that's how things fit together. Um, I'll show you one, one last thing. Because it relates to all of the wicker that was downstairs. And Stuart, we might put a link to the video where I talked about how things fit together downstairs. This is another piece of that beautiful wicker that is painted that color inspired by something that I saw in a Martha Stewart magazine that reads almost green. And then I've got a couple of house a couple of house plants here. So there you go, you guys. That is how it fits together the upstairs version. Let me know what you think and make sure to answer my question of the day in the comments below and make sure you read one another's comments because you guys are a lot smarter than me and you come up with suggestions that are just brilliant. So there you go. Have a great weekend and I'll see you next time. Well, Stuart, come on in. This is kind of an unusual way for you to come into my house because you typically come in the friends and family door located on the east side, which is the secondary entrance. But Stuart is coming in the front door along with all of you because today I'm going to give you a little tour of my downstairs. Now, I, I told Stuart, I said this, it might seem redundant, redundant or kind of iterative because I've showed you downstairs before. But we have so many new subscribers and recently I have made some changes to my 1932 downstairs home and a lot of you have so many questions that I thought right now while we're not concentrating on a lot of spring stuff or holiday things that you might just be a little fly on my shoulder and I would just give you a little bit of background on some of the colors that I used on um, some of the strategi strategies that I use in my house and maybe a few resources. So recently there has been a lot of questions about my artwork. I, I don't have a ton of expensive artwork, but I have a, f a few things, most, some of which I, I should say, some of which belonged to my husband before we got married. So Stuart, if you don't mind backing up a little bit, the first one that is very special to us is an ocean scene. This was painted by Jacobson. And some of you who went to OU or are familiar with the art scene in Oklahoma, it's, I believe it's still, is it still named the Jacobson School of Art down in Norman? And this was painted by an Oklahoman and I, we just love it. And it gives a little bit of that kind of an aqua and a blue contribution to my home that doesn't exist in a lot of different places. So there's a little bit about that piece and I'll share some more information about some other things later. So a lot of other questions I get relate to how does it all fit together? Well, if you came in my front door, there is a tiny little vestibule in there 
with a coat closet. That's where my mailbox is, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it's got a nice view to the front yard. And it really it contributes great, beautiful indoor light because the dark mahogany woodwork in my home makes things a little bit dark. And then if you came in and you went to the left, you could see my dining room. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But so many of you asked because this, when I first started doing my YouTube channel, this was painted kind of a glazed Ralph Lauren red, almost the same hue as the uh, light shades and also of the cabinet that's in there. And just recently, because I wanted to lighten things up a little bit, I painted it this beautiful, it's called Svelte Sage, and it's a Sherman Williams paint. And I just did this a couple of months ago. And I have to say, I really, really love it because it did just that, it kind of lightened things up. But enough about the dining room. I completely, I didn't get really many new pieces at all in here, but I had a decorator help me and I completely rearranged things. And if you're interested in that, Stuart, let's do some kind of, of, of a playlist where people can go back and see some of my inspiration for this. But all of my furniture in here, at least the love seat and the couches, this belonged to my husband even before we were married. And I had the slip covers made by a company called Needles and Shears in Texas. And I just, I still, I don't know if it's if it's a trend that's worn out or not, but I love the look of white slipcovers. And even though they always say slipcovers are so easy and they transform things and you just take them off and wash them, eh, not so much. They, they do get dirty and I can wash them, but not easily. It's very difficult to get them back on in a way that looks good, but I do like their relaxed vibe. More importantly, I like the way that they are just this beautiful light canvas upon which other things in my house can play, like my pillows and my greenery and my foliage and things like that. Um, the two captain's chairs that flank either side of the dining room, those belonged to uh, my, my mom, my second mother, as did all of the wicker in here. And some of this used to be upstairs, but I painted it a color that I saw in a Martha Stewart magazine. It can almost, it's so dark, it can almost read black. But I love, I love wicker. I love wicker when it remains natural, and I certainly love it when it's painted, especially darker hues. I also, this time of year, I love orchids, and you guys have asked me about orchid care, and I, I really, we're going to try to do a video where we go and we talk to an orchid expert in his greenhouse, but I'm not really any expert except that I know that I water them about once a week. When I buy them, I make sure that they're very fresh and that they have a profile and a form that I like. Most of mine I get at Whole Foods or at Trader Joe's, lately primarily Trader Joe's, and then it's just basically how you style them. I have a lot of them down here and I, had a, I have a lot of them upstairs and I love them because they're not prohibitively expensive and they last a really really long time. Stuart how long have we had this? A long time. I got it originally because I wanted it to be a pretty backdrop when I was on the Tamron Hall show and it's done just that and it's just beautiful there. And then also I have lots of my favorite, favorite books here, and it just makes them easy to pick up and look at at any moment in time. And that leads me to kind of an, another tip that I want to show you. But first, let me talk a little bit about the, the wall treatment in here. And I apologize for those of you that I just sound like I'm repeating myself. You've heard this before. These are plaster walls. All of these rolled edges were all here. They're all original to the house. And many, many years ago, 32 years ago to be exact, I had an artist come in and replicate 
this stone treatment. It was uh, something that I had seen in a boutique hotel in New Orleans and showed them pictures. And this was long before faux finishes were really popular. And I had an artist come in and do these walls for me. And as long as I live here, these walls will never be painted because I just so love them. And I so know the thought process and the artistic sensibility that went into their being executed. All of the woodwork in my house, for the most part, with a few exceptions, is all mahogany, and it's all, uh, for the most part, it's all original to the house, from the fireplace to um, most of the shutters, though I did add some built-in, mahogany built-ins later that were not original to the house, but we did stay with the original mahogany. Um, a lot of you asked about this, the rug that I have oversized rugs both in here and in my breakfast room and kitchen and these were custom made they're just a basic sisal and I had them bound in kind of this top color which is the same color that I've used throughout the downstairs they were made by a wonderful um, business that's right around the cor corner from me called rug and carpet I got the these were made in like less than a week and again they're custom made and they're not really terribly expensive and in fact some of these again I've lived here for a long time I think the this one is a, is the second sisal rug that I've had in here and this one I wanted to be a little bit bigger because it according to my friend who gave me some tips this really optimizes the size of the room and and makes the room look a little look larger maybe than it really is you'll notice that one thematic that I have just absolutely everywhere is I always have greens and this time of year fresh flowers in the house these topiaries I got pre-made at Trader Joe's they were here they've been here since well before Christmas and all I do is once a, about once a week I water them and I put them under the sprayer in my kitchen and I hose them down to knock off any potential spider mite or anything like that and typically this room stays pretty cool because I've got a smart thermostat and it will float down to about 62, 65 degrees if I am not home to manually override it. And all of the plants here really seem to like those lower temperatures. It can get dry and, hu and, and I, I'm thinking about putting a humidifier in here, but right now it, it, hasn't, been too, it hasn't been too bad. A lot of you know that I meditate every morning and I kind of roam in different places where I meditate, but this is one of my favorite wintertime places to do that early in the morning. I typically, well, I wouldn't say typically, it kind of depends on a number of different things, but quite often I get up about five and I light this little um, antique furnace little fireplace thing that is original to the house and that is located inside the faux fireplaces. These 1930s houses had a lot of fake fireplaces. Sometimes they initially had, as did this one, a gas jet that went into these little inserts. Some were just completely faux and, and didn't have any really heat warming capabilities whatsoever or heat production capabilities whatsoever. But this is, this is how mine is. Um, a lot of you continue to ask. I showed these at Christmas time, but they've been so popular. And that is these battery operated tapers that I can, you see here, I can control them with a remote and I love these. They have a wax coating. They look very realistic. Stuart, let's try to remember to put a link in the description and up above. And I have to give a shout out. Look at this wonderful, wonderful. It's one of my favorite things. You guys are so dear and you send, you send me cards and gifts. And believe me, I'm not saying this so, so that you will do more of that, but a number of you sent me sweet, sweet things around the holidays, and this was one of my very favorite things, this, this metal pine cone candle holder. And I'm not going to do a shout out on some of these things because some of you have requested that I not mention your name, and I, I, can't, I can't, really can't remember who 
who asked me to and who did not. But the person that sent that to me, thank you very much. It's been one of my favorite things and it will undoubtedly stay up all winter long and definitely come back out of the holidays. Now, probably the, the piece of art you guys most frequently ask about is this painting on my mantle. Um, and I will tell you, it it is kind of, it has a lot of history and it's a little bit emotionally charged for me to talk about this. But nevertheless, my husband and I love it so. This was painted by Paul Shapiro. He was born in 1939. I believe he's still alive. He is a New Mexican landscape artist. And we, I just love the bold strokes in this and the bold colors. And it definitely speaks to my preferred color palette for in my house right now. Uh, my husband had this before we got married. And when we first met, he lived, he owned a house in one part of this neighborhood and I owned a home in a neighborhood nearby. And when we began dating, we did not marry until we were in our 30s. I guess we were both. We, neither one of us had been married. We were kind of desperate by, by then, maybe. Um, but he had this in, his, in the home he lived in as a bachelor. And at one point in time, someone broke into his home and they stole all of his electronics and everything and they torched his house. And we had just started dating at the time. He had asked me to feed his cat. I went over to feed his cat and saw that his home had been burned. And security and the fire department came up and asked me if I knew where Mr. Vodder could be found. And at that time, he owned a business in Boston. Stuart, do you know this story? A little bit. A little bit. He owned a, a business in Austin. He was there and that was, uh, that was the first time I ever spoke with his dad, my then soon to be father-in-law, to locate him and to tell him about what had happened. Now, on a personal note, this was particularly difficult for me because I had a brother who had been killed in a fire just three years before and I got a call in the middle of the night from the fire department telling me about that. And so it brings back just a lot of, of memories, but the redemption here is that it was a pretty monumental thing to have happened to someone. And it brought my husband and I closer almost immediately. And we were mature enough to realize its import. And I was, and I think we both realized that a great judge of character is how someone can handle that kind of huge life trauma and if they handle it well that's a pretty good indicator that they might be marriage material so two years later we got married um, and he my husband just handled it with such great equanimity and I I just love that about him and the the story is it was pretty damaged but we took it to a brilliant art restoration uh, individual who restored it. And so to me now, it just has such a wonderful history of love and discovery and redemption and continued beauty and perseverance. And so it is, it's just so beautiful to me in so many different ways. So Stuart, you didn't know some of that story. So anyhow, it's very important to us and all of the artwork that we have, we don't have a lot of it, but each thing is very, very meaningful to us, which leads me to some of the other things that are on the walls. And that's, we, we collect maps. And it's one that we, it, particularly in our youth, we traveled a whole lot. And that would be our thing, our souvenir that we brought back. My husband is probably the most geographically literate person I have ever made. He has traveled the entire world, um, as has his entire family. And so whenever we would travel someplace, we would, we get maps. And then we bring the maps back and they have significance to us and remind us of the different places that we've been and how fortunate we have been that we were able to travel the world at different points in time. So that is that. You'll notice that I brought in one of my olive trees that gets great southern exposure right now. 
that's where uh, the Christmas tree was. And please let us all take a moment to really notice how clean my windows are. <laughs> So that's been the most exciting thing to happen to me in a while. Uh, my husband gave that, that to me as a gift for my birthday and Christmas because it wasn't inexpensive. And yes, I am very fortunate to be able to afford to do that because I wouldn't be able to do it on my own because we had to remove all of the... Uh, storm windows and everything and it's something when I was in high school I used to walk to lunch and there was one woman who always had the most beautiful windows and I've never forgotten that so when I see them now it makes me appreciate it and it brings in so much more light and it makes me happy so as I've said many times before I will take a load of manure or clean windows over furs and diamonds any day um, these I won't spend too much time in here the bookshelves are reproductions and and my husband and I have, we need an intervention, as does my son Johnny. We have way, way, way too many books. It's the hardest thing for us to get rid of. Um, some of these books in here have been written by loved ones, including my son Johnny, and a lot of them have, have lots of sentimental import. So this is where I keep some of my favorite kids books from when the kids were growing up. I'm a history buff. It's where I have all of the books on Monticello and Jefferson and those um, that area because my son went to University of Virginia. Uh, and so anyhow, that is, I love them. And to me, nothing is more beautiful as a decor item than books. And obviously I have a, a far too large gardening library and a lot of those are garden books. Now, speaking of, so often, we have beautiful, beautiful books that we never look at. So I look at mine pretty frequently. And as you can see, typically there will always be, this is my, a current project I've got going right now. Um, I'm looking at some tear sheets and things, but I do look at my books. And this is one of my favorites now. And as is my habit, this one is called The Well-Loved House. I got this at the library because as is my habit, I check a book out from the library first to see if I like it. I steal um, arrangement ideas, display ideas, vignette ideas. But where my favorite place to have my book is I've got a book stand on this piece of wicker that belonged to my mom. And then some of my favorite books I keep here and just like they do in museums, every few days I come in and I really, it's, it's one of my one minute meditations, I'll really study a page, see what I like about it, replicate some of those ideas, and then move on to the next page. So over time, I really enjoy the whole book. And to keep my place, I just have some kind of beautiful, this is an etched stone from Africa that belonged to my husband, and I just keep that there to kind of save the space. Sometimes I'll have a beautiful leaf there or something like that. Now, we definitely, I definitely need to give you a link to this because this is probably my favorite new decor book that I've gotten this year. And this is Melissa Penfold's book, Living Well Design. I love it for a number of different reasons. I'm very familiar with her work from Instagram and I love her aesthetic. I love it because it's typically an old house, um, a curated old aged aesthetic. And I love it also because that's what my house is. It has an old feel to it. And so when I look at the images here, the ideas resonate with me more because it's similar in style to my own home. And I don't then lust after a kind of decor style that I don't have. So it makes me satisfied with what I do have. And it also infuses me with lots of ideas that relate to my style, my style of, of living. Couple more uh, paintings. There's one over there that I do want to show you. It is of a powwow. My husband is absolutely fascinated. He's uh, just a couple hours short of an anthropology degree from SMU, a graduate degree in anthropology, and he loves Native American culture and pre-Columbian culture. He is, uh, and he's fascinated by South, Southwest history. And this is, he goes to lots of powwows and so he, we bought this painting together because it just speaks to our love of this part of the country 
that culture and and just his interests in general. Okay, so now we're gonna go this way. I'm gonna speed it up, Stuart, okay? Because your arms are getting tired, I know. Um, this door, they're used to, when the, ha when the house was first built in 1932, there was a door here. Um, and then it was taken down when we bought the house. There was no door here. And then we came back in and we had a door made with beveled glass because I liked the separation. And it's also a way to keep this area of the house a little bit warmer because this room that many of you have seen a million times before, the morning room, our bar, library, entryway, whatever you wanna call it, uh, boot room is the entrance that most of us use. This is where Stuart and family and friends come and go. It's typically where I come and go in the front. And I just, I love this room. When we first bought this house, the walls were painted a dark green and we had this crackle finish put over it. When we first moved in, the ceilings were mirrored. <laughs> And we took them out and then we paneled them and stained them to look like mahogany. But all of this, all of these other built-ins are original to the house, as is the glazed windows over here and the lead glass window here. That is all original to the house. And all I, I did have, I think there was plain glass in here and I did put beveled glass in these, in these doors. But all of this is original to the house. Um, and typically whatever is here is also always a very seasonal component. So here's how the rest of it fits together. So this is a hallway that comes into my messy areas, my utilitarian areas. Here is the guest bath that we redid a couple of years ago. Pretty exciting stuff, isn't it, Stuart? Mm -hmm. um, and then this in here is my laundry room, which is kind of our headquarters and house central. My husband made a huge bulletin board for this area to keep all of our, our just keep our life in order. Tell us what we need to do next. Um, and this is a rendition of my house. You I've, guys have seen it many, many times before by the famous and talented Natalie Kent. And this is a fun thing. Um, I don't think I've showed you this before. This is a cross stitch that was done by my very, very talented uh, second oldest sister, Terry. And she has basically just highlighted different things in Oklahoma related to my family members at that point in time. And I come from a very large family of 10 kids and it ju just shows different things that are important about Oklahoma and our lives in particular. And I just, I love that. It's very, very personal and very special to me. And then probably one of the best gifts my mother-in-law ever gave me was the advice when we bought this house to move the washer and dryer up from the basement to this little, back door area off of the kitchen. When we first bought the house, this is where there was nothing in here except for the refrigerator and some cabinets. And why the refrigerator was out here, I don't know. But I took her advice, I'm glad I did, move the washer and dryer up. So I don't have one of those great big fabulous um, laundry rooms that people have now, but nevertheless, it works it works for me. And this is the back door area that goes out to my back stoop where in the summertime lots of my topiaries reside. And doesn't the snow look pretty, Stuart? And then the kitchen, when we bought the house, looked a certain way. We restored it in 1997, I believe. We completely redid it. Um, we came up with this finish, which I continue to still love. There is an underwash of red paint that you can see there. And at the time, I just love that Ralph lauren -y kind of look, and I still love it. And it's now, who knew? Now this color is just very, very popular. 
the kitchen. Uh, I bet I got just last week five questions about what color is my kitchen and the and the breakfast room. It's a color called white sand and it's a Sherwin-William color. It just depending on the light, it looks kind of creamy, kind of buttery, and it most importantly, it blends well with the faux finish that I have in the living room and in the other areas of the house. The fireplace was not original to the house. Um, we put in a wood wood burning fireplace when we redid the kitchen. We put in this large palladium like window when we redid the kitchen um, and we also bumped a wall here out by about five six feet and put in a set of French doors that lead out to the garden because it's kind of all about the garden and now this is where we live most of our winter life here in front of the fireplace and guests, friends, family can sit in the mom and dad chairs and visit with me while I cook on those infrequent occasions I cook now. And it's just really, it's just really cozy. And then there is our breakfast room. As you can see, I am getting ready to sow some seeds because it's almost seed sowing time. February 15th is when I'm going to take the plunge and try to sow some cool season seeds, direct sow them. And also I think on Monday, Stuart, we're doing a QVC thing on my seed, seed starting kit. And then this is just the breakfast room where we eat breakfast <laughs> and dinner. And it leads into the dining room, which you've seen before. And this is another case where there used to be a door here. And then previous owners took it down and we put it back in place and I and put bevel glass in it and looks like I need to wash these windows. Um, and I just like the way it looks and I, lo I love the way candlelight looks reflected through it. And then this is my dining room that you guys have seen before. And I'm getting ready to do some topiary stuff. And there's just always pretty fresh flowers in here typically. And um, it might seem kind of old fashioned, but I love it and I don't think it's too old fashioned. I just like to think that it's classically traditional. And some of you, if you want to go back and look at some of my thrifted videos, this, this beautiful cast iron vase was a thrift store find many years ago. And I think it looks beautiful with these white calanchos in it that I got from, from Trader Joe's. So there you go. We added the built-ins here. This is real mahogany. We added these later. I can't remember what year but it gives me a little bit more storage room and now there's a beautiful flow to the living room which can we can just end on that note Stuart this is kind of how it all fits together we've just gone in a great big circle I hope you guys weren't bored with this if you've seen this before but it just seemed the easiest way to answer hundreds of questions that I've had recently about uh, about our 1932 English Tudor home here in the heart of Oklahoma City. So there you go. So I took my own advice. We got, had a little water break. Yes, we did. We here. needed it. We did need it. We <laughs> did need it. And a potty break too. Um, okay, so I love this. I love this room. You made the comment earlier that you do lots of high-low. Yes. And it's hard for me sometimes to tell the difference between the high and the low, which is a mark of brilliance on your part. So give, give me a couple of high-low examples in Okay. Here. Well, um, a couple of the pieces of furniture, like the black chest over here, actually belong to my parents. And it was a, it's a very nice piece of furniture from the late 60s. Uh -huh. um, I have no idea what, you know, what they paid for it, but, I, but it's a good brand. And you know, it was a nice piece, which I kept um, when my parents um, dismantled their homes. And then um, this piece behind you, the um, okay. Can I? I'm going to stop yeah. you there because talk, speaking of seasonal, and that, that's a whole topic <laughs> I want to yes. talk about. Oh my gosh! Don't you love that? It, that is just incredible in symbolism, in and just absolutely everything. But who knows what, right? Um, and I don't use it seasonally. I that is an estate sale find, and. Um, it is. It was done in the 70s. When I took it apart, there was newspaper that had been padded in the back. So I found a date. It was done in the 70s, I think. It almost looks and as if it's, excuse me for interrupting, as if it's material, but it's paint. No, it's paint. Uh, 
and I'm assuming that it's a young person's artwork. I don't know. And the funny part is, I found it at this estate sale, and I really liked it. And it was very badly framed, of course. And um, it was ten dollars, and I thought, mm, no, I'm going to pass it. Well, then later that day, I kept thinking about what a great piece of art that was. So of course, I was the first person in line at the half price on the next day yeah. to get my five dollar piece of art. So, <laughs> so this is definitely low, Score! right? But it is really a cool piece, and I really, you know, I don't know. I see, I see it for Thanksgiving. You know, pilgrim. Oh yeah, um, it's and, one of the most right, um, memorable right. things in your house. Thank you. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, and then I love the, this, the, the contrast with this Asian-inspired chest. I did chest, too, you know? yeah. But um, anyway, yeah, I'm glad you noticed that. That's funny. No, that is so. just brilliant. Wait, anyway, but the really low thing in here, which I think is pretty cool, is we had had um, some antique dining room chairs that had uh, cane seats. And of course, uh -huh. you know, those cane seats don't last forever. Right. And it's so expensive to replace all that now. So I was at Target one day, and on the end cap, they had clearanced their Windsor chairs. So... <laughs> I got, well, of course, I could only get three at the Target I was in, See, so I had to keep working on it, <laughs> but I ended up with eight of these chairs, and they're, you know, they're, they're just very um, useful and sturdy and much more comfortable than our antique and chairs. And they have a real shaker to, quality. And they have a shaker quality, but also them. a Danish quality. They have, you know, they yeah. pull the 70s back in and the 60s. Um, but they match brilliantly with your old primitive right. cabinet, and I... Love the quilt on the so, table, so it speaks to that. And I'm sure you know that. our little store, Sukasa. Oh, uh, yes. So I oh, am yes. a fanatic of the Conta quilts that Lynn oh, imports. I know. So they're everywhere in our house. But And occasionally I'll see one of her posts, and there'll be a quilt in the background, and I'm like, I have to go get that one. It's so cool. Um, anyway, but that's what this is. So um, And, it, you know, they're reversible. And there's always interesting things on the... Well, that one's not quite so reversible, is it? But um, some of them are very different on yep, the opposite side. they are. And some of them uh, are real vibrant in tone, yes. and some of so, them but have I love more how of a historical you know, they look. Piece, pieces on it. Well, this just, is... Yeah. It is, it's funny so it's that a, you and, and again, they're very inexpensive, so it's a great way yep. to, to do a tabletop. And, and for those of us who want to really deconstruct what you just said, spell that for people so that they will know what to look for because there are various sources of them. They're from India, are they They're from not? India. Yeah, they're and from I, India. And I, you, I may be wrong, so someone will catch me on this, yeah. but I think it's K-A-N-T-H-A, -A, yeah. and it's pronounced Kanta. Yeah, I believe uh, so too. A lot of people will say Kanta, but yeah. I think it's Kanta. Yeah, one of my, my, I have few regrets, but one of my regrets that I have is my son lived in India oh. for years, uh -huh. and he... You should have boatloads of them. I should have boatloads <laughs> of them, um, but but I don't. I have other wonderful things, yes. but I don't have some of these. But this, interestingly, this is one of the things that I want to infuse in my own decor when you come mm -hmm. in, you Good. come in, because I can so okay. see these with some of the, well, uh, and, as pillows. And she's a, she's a great source, right. Um, you yeah. can do pillows out of it. I actually, they're often not really large in size, so they make good tabletop things, but I found one in Dallas at a store that we all used to love, Wisteria. Oh, yeah. That was large enough for our bed. So um, it really, you know, it's that a king a size, find. which was a real find, because well, they are hard to find. I think that's uh, the mark of a good decorator. First of all, you're opportunistic. You always have your eyes and ears open for something that has potential. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a little shout out to Lynn because, Lynn, you're probably going to be watching I this. I hope she will, yes. Love you, girl. Uh, <laughs> she has a wonderful home in the Paseo District, yes. which is a historic district here within spitting walking distance of my house that's a Spanish architecture. Oh, one, right, from the same time period yeah. as this house. As so. this house, just, um. just wonderful. And she's got a needlepoint shop there with fun little gift items and everything. If you're if you're coming in from out of town, you definitely want to stop. go to Sukasa in the Paseo district. So I also, you and I were commenting on the fact that you do not have a rug in here, and I love that. I don't have a rug in my dining room either. Yeah. Well, for practical reasons, you know, it makes a lot of sense not to have one. Um, in my house, it also works because there's so much around us that, mm -hmm. again, having a simple, quiet floor um, is appropriate, and I think it helps show off the other things in the room. Right. Um, yeah, in, in gardening terms, I call that negative space. Yes. I need to have some negative space, Absolutely. and I, I have way too little of it right now. I need to go well, home and work I don't work have on a lot of it, but yeah. I have some. So what are these interesting? So those are called magic sticks, and um, a, an artist friend of mine made those many years ago. Uh, but they're, they're, she works with found objects. That's kind of how she does her sculpture. And these are vertebra mm -hmm. bones, and then she carved these um, sticks out of, I think they're redwood or something, and she used a bandsaw. And then it's all covered in rice paper. And then she embellished some of them with little things. So um, 
talk about texture and oh yeah. my husband yeah. and, would and just go crazy over because he's a huge anthropologist. Oh, well, and, and it's just again in this house, it's like what are those? Because there's nothing like that. You know, it's just interesting. I but think they and different don't and look contrast. Out but of they place. don't stand out, right? But no. they. Um, and I kind of I think I probably liked them when I was really in my Santa Fe mode, um, you know, and I thought they had that vibe, but but that's kind of passed, and so they still work as an art piece, though. Yeah. There's something everywhere you look. Now this this kind of crosses over from your sweet thing, so this must it be is a love. Sweet. It, it's my it, great grandmother. I was gonna say, so I bet right. it had it is. I bet it had a story. Yeah. And it always sat up on something like a cat will do, uh, you know, surveying the room. So And I bet it just again jettisons you back oh, to your does. childhood Absolutely. to see right. it. Yeah, I would not buy it. I mean, you know, so, today. so this is both we're gonna come into the kitchen and this both feels very much like it speaks the same language, but it's in a completely different, refreshing, uh, liberating way. Okay. So come in here because because it's got a different spatial awareness. Well, the scale changes in here. The scale changes. So this is this is the transition point between the old and what we call the old and the new house. Um, and the first part of this room really was the original kitchen. Um, the back door was a window. Um, the kitchen sink was kind of right in here where this countertop is. There was a window here. So it was a, a very narrow galley kitchen. Um, had some interesting architecture features. I mean, the ceiling is sloped, kind of a shed roof on the outside. Um, so then when we decided to make the addition, this became our china room slash yes. breakfast room and then a new kitchen which we all we needed and wanted so it's got a, a sensation of dining in a butler's pantry it does have that feel it absolutely does so, so and this is where you've got all of your fiesta wear um more of your blue and white i'm gonna take a leap here and say you've got kind of an obsession with China <laughs> dish dishware. Look at the color on so, that. Yeah, that's Russell Wright, American Modern, uh, from the '40s, I believe, maybe late '30s. I love that chartreuse. Do you color. and your husband entertain a lot? Uh, we would like to say we do, but I know. <laughs> no, we don't. So part of the reason for doing this room was we had amassed all these dishes, and um, we wanted to be able to see them, uh -huh. and um, so we can at least do that, enjoy them, and then we really do just for the two of us. We use this yeah. all the time. I mean, I realize it's just two plates or something, but we are enjoying it. And, and using and then, special um, things. And yeah. the, the other thing is, is if, it, if you need some kind of rationalization for having a kind of acquisitive personality, that's, that's not just functional. It is also artistic. Absolutely. So it's, it is every bit as beautiful as things you've got hanging on your wall. No, I agree, and I love it. And, you know, it, it, they started, the, the shelves were neatly put together and, you know, kind of arranged. And then as we got more and more and more, it just has become, it's really, it is storage, but it's still really beautiful, I think, to yeah. see it. And those shelves and the cabinets contain it. Yes. So again, you, you're not um, seeing total chaos uh, when you just look at the room. Well, it's got a, very much of an organic vibe to it and it also is indicative of the fact that you actually are using your pieces. Mm -hmm. yeah, really do. And you've got silver that I bet also gets used. And we're getting, and I, I would probably also guess that it's gonna be used more because we're getting ready into, one of the nice things about Oklahoma is if the wind isn't blowing and it's not very, very hot, we do have a pretty long season of outdoor we dining do. when we can live outdoors. And so you've got so many great outdoor yeah. spaces. And, and we use all these things outdoors too. We don't just use them in the dining yeah. room. So. Yeah. We're not, we try not to be too precious with all that stuff. Yeah. So is this pink spode? That is actually, uh, what is this? Johnson Brothers, British Go. Castles, which is a really popular pattern that comes in the pink and it also comes in blue that a lot of people collect. I've and then, and then there are Brothers. some in the stacks, there are some spode pieces and things yeah. that I've collected. At one time, I had a really dark um, red bedroom and um, all, a lot of this china was on the walls, which, you know, was a really pretty and attractive thing. Yeah. So. That would be more probably how my dining room looks now. So this goes out into to your secondary kind of a courtyard, back door, back entrance, maybe garage, where you bring right. in your groceries, that kind of thing. Thank you for having some beautiful flowers. Well, just, we did entertain this weekend, and that was my press. centerpiece for the dining room. Okay, so. that's, that's wonderful. And, and, and you always like tips, so I, this is one of mine. Um, when I designed the kitchen, 
I had always wanted a place to have flowers in the house that you know that I would enjoy every day. And the dining room table is really not the place. I mean, right, yeah. you pass by there, but you really don't. Uh -huh. And the entry hall doesn't work so much. So when I, I intentionally did this and said I'm going to always have something on the counter, whether it's um, a flower arrangement, you know, from the weekend or something I just got out of the yard or. Um, you know, when pumpkins are going to mm -hmm. be out mm -hmm. here soon, there'll be a big pumpkin up here. Yeah. Just something to enjoy. And this is the one place we are a million times a day is well, standing right it, here so we get to enjoy it. And I think it takes a tip kind of from restaurants and bars and things that they always have a place, one central place yes. where they always have fresh and usually it's kind of extravagant. Yes, or, it or is. Done, and this is, this is just... This is just beautiful, and so the the other thing is, I I notice on pra, on a practical level that even though you like layering in things, that you have lots of functioning workable we do. space. Yes. So so you you like to cook, don't you? Oh, we you? do absolutely. Yeah, you cook yeah, a lot. So use. so this is just a brilliant kitchen, and so an, another uh, high low thing. These two pieces of granite were in our old kitchen. And when we did the new kitchen, it was like, oh, I hate to throw that away. So um, we created this storage rack out of, um, you know, metro shelving, yep. restaurant shelving. Great place to put the the, the nice cast uh -huh. iron so you can see it. Yeah. And, you know, of course, that's so heavy, it's hard to get in and out of the cabinet right. anyway. So it's out. But anyway, these tops became uh, very useful mm -hmm. for the kitchen, too. And provides a little contrast to the to the black so well and is is just a nice take on an island on a kitchen yes. island without with it being looking a little bit more old and, and right if it's a, a little thing. less yeah, yeah a little less maybe suburbia and and you've got the beautiful windows and the shades and it's just it everything just works together beautifully um, so it is it is just so gorgeously curated and and, and, and again, intimate. It feels very cozy. Now, what, one of my favorite things that I, I'm anxious to show you about my house that you're going to, I'm, I'm going to guess you're going to really be jealous of. <laughs> okay. I have a wood burning fireplace in my kitchen. Uh, in your kitchen? In my kitchen. Oh, how wonderful. See, and that's such a useful kitchen. place to have it. It is. You're in there. Oh, and, yeah. and you know, the, the, the ridiculous thing is, is we've got these houses, and of course, compared to contemporary houses, my English tutor isn't that big. Right. But yeah. nevertheless, where do we live? We live in this tiny little area in my tiny kitchen and breakfast area where the yes, fireplace no, that, is. That's, that's, that's where we, yeah, we, right. we, we live our yeah, entire life there, which is a real, I think, a consideration for people if you're building a house or whatever, where do you really live? Right. No, you I know, agree. It's, it's and, those kind of spaces. And these spaces. So. so, again, brilliance in design for not only how it functions, but also how you age in place the fact that your master bedroom is right near the kitchen. Let's go right. and there. That, that was one of the things we wanted to do um, with an addition was to, to try to be able to age in place. So the yeah. master bedroom, getting on the first floor, the getting the laundry out of the basement, um, those sorts of things. Having a shower that you can walk or roll right. into. Uh, Absolutely. So very important design considerations. So. And, and you've got pieces that just transition beautifully from kitchen so you've got an assortment of both kitchen items but also pretty items mm -hmm. with additional storage that you've got that leads you into this so where you're brilliant. walking through linda now was the back door uh, oh really the, that was for the back door so this is how you pop out into what is now the master bedroom and sitting room so where was the kitchen so it was along there that where the china and all that that was the kitchen oh that was okay the galley kitchen. okay and then you and expanded then, it out so then we came this out way to i got gotcha. you okay uh, very but good. that hallway that you just came through was here um, and we, where the door is now was a window and where the door into the bedroom was the back door, so to the house. And you've managed to make it, even though it's a passageway, you've still managed to make it functional space because there's storage oh, in, absolutely. This, in, I mean, in this little But it also foyer. provides a transition from the kitchen to the bedroom, which is a little tricky when you're adding onto one of our old houses to get the transition right. So uh, that it so you don't really feel like you're moving from the kitchen to the bedroom, but you are. But you so. are. And it's okay. But it's also... It's also handy at night, though, when you go to get ice cream, so... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's also handy at night when you come in and you're absolutely exhausted. You yes. just come in that back door and you just right. fall into bed. So. so, oh my gosh, this has... I love one of the things that I'm passionate about. I love a British colonial mm. look. And this room has a, a, a real British colonial vibe. I like the fact that you made no apology or whatever for putting the TV here in your bookshelves. That's just... I think it's what we do, and so you just have to do it. Yeah. Um, I find that when I go in homes where it has been hidden, it's usually 
some cabinet and the doors are gaping open and it just really draws more attention yes. to the fact that you tried to do something than to yes. let it just kind of disappear into this. So, yes. Um, and, like and But this also has a modern sensibility, so it does not look necessarily out of place. Right. No, and I agree. it so, looks... And my, when we designed this, I, of course, loved the living room ceiling. And I wanted to echo that in some way back here, but I didn't want it to be so heavy. Um, I mean, right. I think sleeping under all that every night would be, you know, not a great feeling. So um, we did the wood again and did the beams, but then we decided to just paint it all. Um, and of course, the beams are not nearly as massive as the ones in the living room. But and I think very it, much an indoor-outdoor vibe because they've got. You almost expect these to be French doors that would go. That and, would go and we outside. We talked about that sort of thing, but they get in the way. You yeah. know, when you're in the house. They can. So, and, and we really have enough ways to get in and out. So um, I felt like the windows probably. And maybe from a security standpoint. Too. Security standpoint, we actually do open our windows when we can. Yeah. And um, so we like that aspect of it. And I don't. Cross, nice cross right. breeze I don't here. love sleeping with just a door standing open. I feel a little safer with just a window open. Yeah, so. absolutely. Uh, well, you know. and you're right near the back door. So this yeah. is, but every, every place, what I love about all of your living areas is every place I feel like I could, plop down and be very comfortable with a book and a cold drink or a cup of tea or a glass or, of wine or a glass of <laughs> right. wine or or um a bracing glass of whiskey and ice <laughs> yes uh yeah anywhere and just feel so at just so at home well thank you for saying that that is i think that's a goal is you want yeah. even if you are a minimalist you still want to be able to do those things. Yes. I mean, we're all yes. drawn to that. Um, yes. And there are different uh, aesthetics on how that works and what mm -hmm. you want, but you still want a comfortable place and you should have lots of them. Yeah, I and think. even if you're a minimalist, there, I, I think minimalism and warmth are not mutually They're, exclusive. They are not exclusive at all. So, so. this and is- And as you come out here too, you will see the furnishings start getting a little more mixed. There's some 70s things, some uh -huh. uh, reproduction things, you know, from the 20s and 30s. Um, the sofa is a copy of a famous designer from the 30s, I believe. Um, but then mixed with, as you said, you know, this British colonial type bed. Mm -hmm. um, the black chest to the right of it was a piece in my grandmother's and breakfast room. And my favorite room. things. Oh, um, and when you're not looking, I'm going to snag that lamp over there. Isn't that oh, wonderful? Oh, that is wonderful. So um, when I was in college, I guess, and didn't have funds to buy things, there used to be this wonderful store in Oklahoma City um, at 50 Pin Place, and it was an Asian shop. Oh, and wow, now you're... I'm going to remember not remember the last name. You might not have even lived here then. I, I don't um, think I did. Anyway, um, I always was fascinated by these lamps and her tansu chest that she had. So um, in the dining room, I got oh, a tansu chest cool. that was going to be dumped out at the retail store I worked in. I paid nothing for that. But anyway, this woman passed away, and I was at her estate sale, and this was one of the lamps. That, and I don't remember it specifically, but it was in her home. Yes. So it was clearly something she bought when uh, you know she had this store. Uh, the name will come to me later. And it was a lovely, lovely store. Wonderful touch points. Um, but again, and, and even though I didn't really know her, she lived near this house. And, you know, there's just a connection. She yes. was someone in our city who had a, her own business. And it was just, you know, a yeah. really, a, kind of a neat thing. Oklahoma City has a really deep and rich, we may be a young state, but it's a very deep and rich history. And we're going to show an example of that here oh, momentarily. Are, yes. But speaking of connections, it's, you know, this is a, you may have a lot of stuff. This is an easy house to live in. And, and here is an example of that. Can we talk first a little bit about your floors? Well, we decided to just do stained concrete, um, partly for practicality reasons in the bathroom, and you're going to see the laundry in a minute. Um, but we kind of, you know, we felt like wood wasn't just great for that. Mm -hmm. We also had acquired this big rug, and I didn't really want to put wood down and then cover it up with a rug. Right. So it just made more sense just to go ahead and stain the concrete and get the dark brown color like the wood floor. Yeah. Um, but but it's great. And I the heat ducts run under it, and it actually stays warm in the winter. So you would think it would be really cold. Uh, that we did not know that was going to happen. But, yeah. But it, does, it, was it was a happy it circumstance. It was a happy circumstance. So. And then in the summer, of course, it is cool, and we like that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Very much. So. Yeah. So this then comes into. The master bath, where you still, I love using these kind of rugs in. You're your, standing in my very it, favorite rug in my whole collection. I just absolutely love that for some well, reason. It's, it's simple, but the colors are wonderful. And and you've got large baskets for utilitarian purposes. Uh -huh. I love I love that. Um, but even in, even in this area, 
And I'm so glad that you said we could come into your bathrooms because here's so many good little ideas. When you don't have room for a regular door, you've got one of these sliding pocket yes. doors here and you've got both practical and good looking storage in here. And I like the fact that these, these shelves are fixed. Yes, they are. They're here and they're a little bit they're thicker there. and they're, they're fixed and you've got more pottery in here and it's it's a walk-in or roll-in eventually <laughs> Might yeah. Light up, but yes yeah i mean uh, let's, okay. let's face it right. we're at, we're at that transition point in time so it's just it's really lovely let me get out of the way so stuart can kind of show that um these are deer that's great she's a seattle or not Seattle, but are they Washington. Clay? Are they clay? I think they're clay. And I have a flower pot outside sitting on that table in the sitting area that she did. But um, I love those. But I don't think she's working anymore. Better show these, Stuart, or people are going to ask what we're talking about. These little clay flowers and things here. I have some of these baskets, too. Aren't those great? They oh, are great. Yeah, so. They're very fun. They're uh, made of, like this was, I don't know if these are made out of gum wrappers or I don't know, something like yeah. that, but they're woven. That or comic books or I don't know, yeah. but something like that. Yeah, right? something colorful. Right. Something colorful. And then this is, this is just incredible. I love the E, again, the brilliance and ease of living. So all your bedding and everything, storage is right yes. near your bedroom. And then come back around here, Stuart. And so smart. You have no excuse for being caught up in your laundry, John. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. Because this is where your laundry room right. is. Right, it is. And it really is convenient, so. This is where the closet is. Yeah. Yeah, Stuart, you 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 MC this one. Talk about the closet. <laughs> well, you have artwork, even I have artwork. I have some uh, family things that I didn't quite know what to do with. So that model was something my dad had made, and you know we couldn't let go of it. So, but I also didn't want it in my out in the living room. So it was a great thing for the closet. And then the artwork to the left of that is a friend who does some things that I kind of like. And, now this yeah. is a. This might be a strange question. Is this um, is this tornado? Can, it is not. It is not. No, we okay. have a basement in the house, so we didn't really need to do okay. any other um, because tornado stuff. But. In Oklahoma and actually all parts of the country really, now, you need it now. really mm -hmm. need to think about a safe place where you can go for absolutely shelter from tornadoes and things. It also, I think, is just a perfect example in here of how you look at everything through an artist's eye. Oh, mirror. Stuart is, <laughs> Did you get Stuart is not allowed to be. If anybody sees Stuart, we have to kill them because ah, he is he is very much a uh, mysterious Stuart. Have, yeah. About twenty thousand of them. So, but you you look at everything through an artist's lens. That functional things are also a form well, of beauty. And I mean, this just when I saw this, this made me so happy because I'm a big hat person. Yes, I know you are. So my um, re my retail background shows up in the closet, don't you think? That yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I things think are folded. And I think your retail self is showing a <laughs> yeah, little bit. I think yeah, it is. I think so too. So that's just beautiful. And then I want to end on on this historical note because you live in such a historical neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I live in a historical home. It's near and dear to our hearts. And man, this is the essence of the history of Isn't Oklahoma. That great? I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this very well. But describe to us what this is, John. Well, it's the state capitol on the left, where Stuart just started. And then, it's, you can see, it's surrounded by oil derricks, which is what this whole area was built on. Um, and then, as he keeps going to the right, you'll see into the neighborhood. And that's actually 21st Street right in here. And the house we're touring is right there. Um, so we feel like this picture was taken probably in the so early cool. 30s, somewhere in there. You can totally um, see it. Yeah. <laughs> that's so cool. And it, this so speaks, now, for those of us, those of you from out of state who may wonder, no, we don't have these oil derricks. So I think there's I think there's one on the... But none, on the, of, none of the actual derricks. none there's of the some towers. Of the, right. Yeah, there's the pumps, but the not, pumps but not the towers anymore, which, it, it looks cool here, but really is kind of slightly. It would have been horrible. <laughs> right. um, and it must have smelled just... Just atrocious. terrific. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this is... This is very much, we're thinking the vintage of like the 1930s, which is also when my house was and built. The other interesting thing that I don't know the history on, apparently there was a street 
car. There was a streetcar, right yeah. And, and I bet it connected with the streetcar that ran up and down Classen, which is very much near my somehow. house. Yeah. Uh, so it, it gives us a window into the past, which gives us a touch point to how we're, we're kind of, um, we're, we're a nice little reservoirs. Yes. Of, of the past in these older homes, and it's, well, I think, why we're so crazy about you know, it. And, and it's such an honor to be a caretaker of something mm -hmm. like this and yeah. to keep it going. And, yeah. and you know, our house is, um, I guess, 93 years old now. Yeah. And, you know, it's amazing how much of it is still intact uh, because it has been cared for most of the time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, there's always something new to take care of. But, yes. um, but anyway, I feel very fortunate to be able to. And our um, uh, financial advisor said that, um, I'm trying to think how he said this, but anyway, um, owning an older home, a historic home, is a, is truly a cho a lifestyle choice. You pick to do mm -hmm. that, and then to invest your money in it and to take care of it. Yes. And and if you aren't willing to do that, it's probably not for you, because it's a lot of work. It's about um, being a good a good steward. It is absolutely about being a good steward. But the other thing is, is is all of us who have experienced real major swings in the real estate market, up and down, mm -hmm. and up and down, and up and down. As someone told me, again, it was a financial person, but they're not making any more old homes. No, they are not. <laughs> so they're not making any more 100-year-old homes. No. And so there will always be um, an appetite for that those vestiges be. of, of history to really reside in history. And I always like to think, you know, like who knocked on these doors and, and what news was right. conveyed through these doors through the world wars and all of those kind of things. So it really does make you feel a responsibility to be a good yeah. a good steward. And nobody's a better steward than you are. Oh, thank you, my thank friend. You. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks guys. I hope you enjoyed this real treat and Thank you to John, who gave us a good chunk of his time. Thank you. My pleasure to show it all. Well, I want to continue with my holiday home tour and show you my living room, but I thought it might be kind of fun if I revealed it to you from the same perspective that my boys, when they were little, and I guess even now that they're big, would see it for the first time on Christmas morning. So they'd come down these stairs. In the past, it would be festooned in greenery and all sorts of different ornamentation. But this year, I'm being a little bit more simplified in my holiday decor. It's just my husband and myself staying home and being safe. So I streamlined it a little bit. But I want you to come with me and I'll show you what is revealed to them after Santa came to town. And so here we are in front of my fireplace. The stockings are hung with great care because I've got lots of candles lit and I try to make it as magical as possible. I'm sure you do too. Let me give you a little bit of detail about my holiday decor, a little bit of how Christmas unfolds at my house um, and some of my favorite things, starting with the music that you're hearing. This is my favorite CD of all time. It was gifted to me by my friend Gayla and at the time she said it was her favorite CD. If you've watched my videos for any length of time, you know I have a real fondness for piano music. And this, and I'll make sure to put a link below, but this is Danny Wright's Christmas. That's W-R-I-G-H-T. I love his piano music. If you want to treat yourself, then make a, a station on Pandora called Danny Wright Holiday because it's absolutely beautiful. It's all piano music. It's quiet. It's lovely. I can work to it. And it really sets, I think, a beautiful, beautiful tone. So that is number one. Number two, this is my 1935 house. All of this woodwork is original. And this year I decided pretty much just to go with natural elements. I normally do, but this year I am especially being vigilant about that. You won't see lots of uh, metallic glittery baubles. Um, I, I personally find that uh, a little bit garish for my home, for my home in particular, not necessarily yours. I like to have lots of candles lit. Um, 
it's candlelight is one of the most indispensable things to me for the holidays and i keep lots of trader joe's dripless candles on hand at all times because i really love the way they light and the way they burn and they're inexpensive so you can see that the mantle is just decorated with greenery with arborvita and some juniper that's all cut from my garden um, I love showing not only the greenery, but part of the limbs themselves. And I like the way that they kind of frame whatever it is I'm trying to highlight. I have a whole collection of pine cones. Again, pine cones are one of the indispensable things to me over Christmas time. I have a couple of tubs filled with them of all different sizes. These long, large sugar pine cones I actually got in Lake Tahoe a hundred years ago. And all of these uh, dried pomegranates I've had for years. I save them from one year to the next. Sometimes they come out at Thanksgiving and sometimes they come out at Christmas time. Now, one of the magical things that happens uh, on Christmas Eve is that these pretty stockings, these twall stockings that I have here, will be switched out with my kids' traditional stockings that I have needle pointed or that they think of as their very own. That way they're kind of not tempted. These are just the pretty ones. I like to fill them with pine cones and greenery. A little bit later on, I'll show you that I also like to wrap tiny little gifts in whatever my um, thematic gift wrap is for the season and tuck them in there along with candy canes and things. I'm dispensing with some of the candy and things this year because, uh, for well, for obvious reasons. One thing that's very traditional at my house that always gets wrapped as if it's a real gift and tuck in, tucked inside their stockings are those old Lifesaver books that you used to get when you were a kid. Remember when you would do the classroom exchange? Stuart's nodding his head and that was always the best gift that you could get were those lifesaver books. So as a nod to the past, both my own and my boys, I always get them a lifesaver book, even now as adults, and wrap them and stick them in their stockings. So I, one, another thing that I find indispensable are these little battery operated tea lights. I have them everywhere in my living room. I'll try to put a link to le below. I buy them off of Amazon. They actually have a remote control that goes along with them. So it makes them very easy to turn them on and off, especially because I've got them tucked into all sorts of, of tight little spaces. So that's basically my mantle. I do want to tell you something very special It's one of my most prized possessions and that's this Shapiro oil painting and let me give you a little story about this um, it's actually been restored when my husband and I I think two or three weeks after we met someone broke into his home and torched it they stole all of his electronics stole all of his valuables and then they torched his home and i was actually babysitting his cat i went over to feed his cat and there was a fireman standing in the front yard and i had to call him in austin to tell him that his uh his home had not burnt to the ground but it had suffered a lot of damage it was the first time i talked to his dad on the phone um, and so every time and he also was so calm when i told him so whenever i look at this painting i'm so pleased that we were able to restore it it reminds me of how calm my husband is in a crisis and the loving way that his father responded to me from the very beginning. So I just wanted to share that uh, little story with you because it really means something to me. So come over here with me. Now, first of all, you can see my kind of out of place TV. I'm very much uh, in Sapotico with Brian Branton who did his home tour yesterday because in these older homes, there's just not really a lot of good places to put your, your TV and they kind of stick out like a sore thumb. For years, I resisted having a TV in my living room, and then I realized that what that did was just relegate my living room to wasted space, and that is just not 
that doesn't make sense. All rooms of your home should be lived in. So I put a TV in here um, and now we can lounge on the couch. It's fun. It's a gathering place. Old homes in general are not good for TV viewing, especially with a crowd. But we go to my friends with more modern homes for that kind of activity anyway. But it's kind of cozy to sit here in front of the fireplace and watch a movie. Oh, one other thing. Let me backtrack. This is a gas burning little furnace. It is an antique that came with the house. It sets into the inset of where the fireplace would be. In these 1930s houses, they didn't have wood burning fireplaces. The one that I have in my kitchen, we actually installed ourselves. But this gives us great heat. It has saved us through multiple ice storms when our power went out. It creates a really nice, um, a nice warm atmosphere. I think that's very, very cozy. It's a great source of comfort to us. Now, I, I have this lit for you right now, but that's only because this is special. I also have my concrete Santa over here that was given to me by a client years ago with another candle. In real life, I would not have this furnace lit with any of this in front of it because for obvious reasons, um, I'm, we're pretty scared of fire around here. Um, one other thing that might be fun for you to know, I think this is a wonderful idea. If any of you have really old magazines um, or new magazines that will become old and you're trying to kind of clear some things out of your house and gift them to someone else, this is a great idea. My husband visited a childhood friend of his in Colorado not too long ago who has a huge inventory of these old life magazines that are just really too precious to discard offhandedly, I think. So whenever anyone comes to visit him, he asks them what their birth year is and their birth month. And if he has an issue that relates to that or his, that his birth year, then he will give them that or the issue that is closest to their birth date. And I think it's just a wonderful nod to history and a great way um, to kind of share your things with others that you find valuable. And my husband looked through the whole thing. He got a dose of history and also a little flashback in time. Now, let me show you this. This is the vestibule. This is actually my front door. All of these rounded, architectural deta details are original to the house. And it's a, a little vestibule, even though we don't use our front yard a lot, or our front door a lot, I'm gonna show you a couple of things. Number one, this is kind of exciting, don't tell, but I've got a tub in here that contains, wrapped up very carefully, um, Jamie's, my husband, Hub's mother's china that we're gonna gift to my son and his fiance for Christmas time. They have always loved it, and I've got it kind of stored in here and here's my old-fashioned mail slot and then this is kind of a fun little detail this is a little window peek so you could see what guests were at your, at your door before you opened the door itself and look at that isn't that magical it's actually snowing outside Stuart see if you can pan over from my perspective I love being able to look outside and seeing my neighbors holiday decorations and when the tulips are in bloom I sometimes come to this front door and just peek through this little window I find it absolutely charming it's one of my favorite things in the house now, if you come this way you can kind of see a vantage point of the steps again and how my boys would come down the steps now come this way and let me talk to you a little bit about these bookshelves now these are actually reproductions but they hold some of mine and my husband's very favorite books. Um, they're just prized. This is where I keep all of my children's favorite books. 
from when they were little, if you give a moose a muffin. That way I know which ones I want to save for them when they're older. There, that's very Christmassy. And when they were here and when they were little, then I would pull out all of the holiday ones, whatever the season was, and I'd put them on my coffee table. Let me show you something else. This is my favorite picture. of myself and my boys when they were little, right in front of our enormous oak tree in the front. So you can see another reason why when anything happens to that oak tree, I get so upset. It's not a very pretty picture frame. I need to change that out. Uh, but these are just some things that are really valuable to me. Another thing that they house, my son um, has a degree in literary translation and he speaks fluent Hindi and some Russian. And a lot of his prized texts that um, are in Hindi and are in Russian, we keep in here. And just our most valuable, some of our most valuable possessions, some of my husband's, he's, he's got a degree in anthropology, so some of his artifacts we keep in here. And then again, I like to use a lot of these little tea lights, and I like the way that just a few of them scattered in here kind of illuminate the space. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I, I didn't spend as much time as I normally spend decorating my living room, uh, but I'm not going to pretend that creating something like this doesn't take some time. It does, and I do it over a period of days. I do a little bit every day, partly because I have to fit in some work in there, but also because I find that like my garden, it's an organic process, and I kind of come up with an idea, and then I enjoy that thematic kind of just um, revealing itself to me over time. So this year, my initial point of inspiration was some gift wrap that I saw and I'll show it to you and actually also the storm damage from my tree it um, reminded me of how precious our woodlands are and um, and so I used some of, of things that were precious to me in my Christmas decor so you can kind of see over here the woodland theme that I've got. This is normally my book table. Um, if you want to go back in time, you can see the video that I did where I found this broken pot. And I loved its kind of, oh, it looked like ruins. And I loved the way it looked. So I filled it with some wonderful amaryllis from Color Blends. You can see that they are just about, this is one of the most magical things at Christmas time for me are these big, fat, voluptuous buds. And these are gonna be absolutely gorgeous. I believe these are double delicious. I got these from Color Blends. And then I've just festooned the entire arrangement with some eucalyptus branching that dries beautifully. Lots of my prized pine cones. I've top dressed it in some sheet moss that I got from my florist. And then because I always like things to have a little bit more stature, I elevate it on a plant stand, on a metal plant stand, which also provides a support to wrap some of the greenery and the little fairy lights that I like so much. And then I think also that kind of speaks to this woodland theme are these large antlers. This is kind of a fun way to reuse and repurpose something. This is a little salt, or excuse me, cream and sugar set that was given to me by my sister-in-law. It's an antique and I've just placed some votive candles in here and I am using it to hold some tea lights. Here are some of those paper white nice narcissus that I forced. And I'll put a link below to these wonderful little supports that you can get off of Amazon. They're very inexpensive. I think I got about six of them for just under $5. And they are a wonderful support for all of my bulbs. You can see the other pot of bulbs I did over here. And then Stuart, if you can show in the back, there's one of my 
free topiaries of just a laurel that I dug up from my yard. You've seen them before outside in my garden. And I top dressed it with some sheet moss. And here is the wonderful gift wrap that I got that looks like, like deer fur. And I like it to wrap my gifts and have them be part of the decor itself. I've got little bips and baubles and twigs and things that I decorate the package with. And it kind of, again, just served to inspire the rest of what's going on here. Now this is definitely a gardener's tableau. This Christmas tree, I think I told you I was inspired by a very tall, slim, cylindrical shape this year. And so that is the shape that I adopted for my Christmas tree. This is a Fraser fir. And at the end of this video, I'll put a practical, it'll be kind of a double feature. I'll put a practical um, addition here where you can see how I set up my Christmas tree, the Christmas tree stand I used so that I could place it in a basket because I wanted that organic feel. Not a lot of Christmas decorations this year. They're all pine cones, a few lights, some cotton bowls. These are all rose hips that actually came out of a birthday arrangement that my friend Jenny gave to me and I've repurposed them here. And then I've got just a very few ornaments on here that look kind of like snowy deer and lots and lots of pine cones. So this year I was very simple. I also tucked in here some of, I told you another indispensable thing to me is spray paint during the holidays. So some of the leaves and things that I've spray painted, some of which I save from year to year, I tucked into the foliage. It looks almost as if it's blown in there. And I like the way that that looks. Periodically also, if I want it to look as if it's a bit uh, snow kissed, I'll tuck some cotton and things into the pine cones to make it look as if they are just, um, there's a whisper of snow on them. So back in here, I've got some more evergreens. That is an Arizona cypress that I got at Whole Foods this year that will later be relegated to the outdoors, a lemon cypress. This area in here, because it's close to the window, stays very cool. I make sure to keep them watered. Um, it gets bright light because this is a southern exposure. So I can keep these in here for a couple of weeks before they have to go outside and show any signs of distress. Again, I've got some battery operated lanterns and things that are back in here. Um, I also love magnolia pods. So I have some magnolia pods that I use to decorate my packages. And here's some little acorn tops that have been spray painted. That's that wonderful Dragon Prince Cryptomeria from Southern Living. I'm actually, that's part of a gift and I'm gonna do a video to show you how I sometimes gift plants in baskets and things. This is a really fun idea. This is a, an, another amaryllis with one of those stands or supports on it. And then this is a little seed starter that I've put some snips in from Bridgetown Tools. I'll put links below. But this is part of a gift that I'm gonna to give to my kids and I'm gonna fill it with succulents. And I think they'll really they'll really like that because they're very they're very young and hip and, and so many of you young viewers are really into succulents and things and things like that. Here's another one of my free topiaries that I dug up from outside. I think I have about five of these. There were cherry laurels that just the birds planted. And this is a little juniper with some tiny little pine cones. And then in keeping with the packages being part of the decor, you can see how I've got another giant pine cone on there with some more of that eucalyptus foliage. So, also, let me point out to you um, 
my dining room that's not yet decorated and if you guys like these kinds of videos i'm outside of my comfort zone a little bit coming inside um stuart does the best he can with lighting and everything in my old house with its mahogany woodwork but if you like these kind of videos please subscribe comment share it with your friends let me know what you think and more importantly i love it when you share i can't always respond to every comment but i promise you i do read them please let me know some of your very favorite things your very favorite christmas music um one of your, of your very favorite christmas memories um one very special tradition that may not be the norm you know something other than just making cookies or whatever but some tradition that's really special to you and your family because it's those kinds of things that i think make the holidays uh, in some ways for some people the best time of the year uh, I, I really think it creates kind of a beautiful tableau. A couple of other things before I sign off. Um, Stuart, if you could just point to that map that's in the corner over there and the arrangement of different natural oh, biblos that I've got up there. Those are all spray painted treasures that I've had for years. I spray painted them in gold and over the years they've aged and gotten more burnished. And I love the way they almost look like carved wood. Such an easy thing to do. These are treasures that I put in the same place every year and I love the way they look. And again, all of that was just a gift of mother nature. They were just all forged items that I found and tried to kind of transform in some some kind of magical way. I leave them up all through January because I think they look so beautiful. And then in the spirit of Christmas, I'm going to close um, just showing you a, a couple more practical practical things and and treasures that I have. Uh, number one, you may be wondering pragmatically how I can keep all of that watered without disturbing the entire tableau. And look at how beautiful it looks with that snow in the background. I planned that. I planned that just for you guys. So I want to show you this. This is a Christmas tree funnel, a Christmas tree watering device. And all you have to do is just stick it through the foliage of the Christmas tree down into the Christmas tree holder and you can water it. And I can water all of these things without disturbing the entire tableau. It works brilliantly. Um, I'll try to put a link below. And then I wanna show you one other thing that's really special to me and I was going to put some greenery on these portraits this morning to finish this room, but then it snowed and I didn't, and I didn't get out there. But I want to show you two images that I think are, are, they're special to me and I think they're very, it's very serendipitous. This is my husband's father, Bud, Bud Vodder, a really handsome man. He was a B-17 bomber pilot in World War II as was my father, coincidentally, also another handsome man. And they were in the same training location, unbeknownst to them, this Oklahoman and this Indiana Hoosier. They trained in the same area in Texas, literally within weeks of one another. And we discovered that a little bit later um, after my husband and I got engaged and we were just talking about our family histories. They're both gone right now, but I love these, these old fashioned portraits here. They're really special to me, as are you. So thank you for coming into my home, um, into my little world. I hope you enjoyed it. It's not the garden, but it definitely has the feel and the flavor of a garden home at Christmas time. Thank you all. Merry Christmas.
guesting today before I give you a little tour of my bedroom. Now, the reason that I'm dusting with one of these feather dusters is because recently when I did a thrifting episode here in my bedroom, a lot of you guys asked if I would show you my bedroom, so I'm happy to do that. I think we did it in one video around the holidays a year or two ago, I can't remember, but for those of you who haven't seen it, I'll try to give you some details on it. But a number of you also asked, well, how do I keep all of these dusted? And this is how I keep it dusted. I just have a feather duster and once or twice a week, I just kind of do this. And then periodically, because Hubs and I are always inventorying our books, we are bringing some in, we're getting rid of, rid of a lot of them right now. Then when we do a shelf or two once a week, then that's when I deep clean behind and really do some intense dusting. So you'd be amazed at how effective this is. And actually, I just kind of keep it hidden in a basket so that I can grab it whenever I need to and change out the head when it gets too dusty. Now this tip is compliments of my friend Kylie and she recommends and says it really has reduced the amount of dust she has in her home and that's by getting an air purifier for your room and I actually have ordered one and I, I have one of those um, those purifiers that's connected to your HVAC system, but I want one that's a little bit more targeted and mine, my larger unit is a little bit old, so I don't know how effective it really is, but I am gonna get a smaller unit for in here. And that's helpful if you have allergies. I'm allergic to dust and dander. If you, my husband has COPD, or if you have any kind of respiratory issues in general, good idea to keep dust to a minimum and so thank you Kylie for for that tip and I'll put a link to the one that I've that I have ordered. Um, another thing is that because, I mean, this is a very dynamic wall of books. We put in these bookshelves when we bought the house. I've always had wanted to see uh, or wanted to have kind of a bedroom that was a library and this, I saw something in a magazine. It was actually in a home in Charlottesville, Virginia. I fell in love with it and we just kind of recreated it in here. Here's another tip, you guys. If you, like me, live in an older home that is light starved, one thing that we did was, this is a dormer closet. I won't show you what's inside of it because it hangle, handles kind of and holds kind of the utilitarian stuff of life. My husband likes to sleep with a fan on. It's got other things like that that we stash in there. But it does have a wonderful window in it. When we bought the house, that was a solid door. So to infuse a little bit more light into this room, I replaced that door with a multi-paned glass door with bevel glass, which still speaks to the vintage of my house, but it helped uh, bring in more light to this space immeasurably. So that's another tip and it wasn't too, it wasn't too expensive of an option, especially since we've lived in this house for so long. It was a really good return on my investment. Now I, we have talked a lot about this on my channel when we've done home interior tours and that is are we maximalists are we minimalists what are we well i would say that i am a moderalist moderation in all things so while my bookshelves tend to be pretty packed and contained um, any kind of surfaces that really are pressed into use, like my nightstands, my hub's nightstand over there, these don't have a lot of things on them. And what they have on them are just strictly functional. So obviously I've got my remote, I've got a beautiful uh, cigarette, What's, what are these called? I don't even know what they're called, ashtrays, thank you. That just shows how it's not part of our lexicon anymore now that we don't smoke so much. But this belonged to my brother-in-law and so I use it as a coaster by my bedside. And then obviously I have my books and everything. So here's another trip that, uh, trick that I showed on Instagram that has also aesthetically improved my quality of life. I don't like things that are plastic. 
and I don't like things lying around that are plastic because I don't like to see them. So I wanted something to have by my bedside and always my storage container of choice is some kind of basket. I am kind of a basket slut. I love baskets. I love the texture of them. You guys know I like to use them outside. I like to use them inside. It's a great thing to look for at thrift stores. But when I had all of the detritus of life that I like to keep by my bedside, for a while I had it in an open basket, but I didn't like that either because you could see, to make it accessible, the basket didn't have a top and then you could still kind of see the paraphernalia that was in there. I know you guys think I'm a control freak, but nevertheless, these are little delights that are not expensive and give me immense joy. So in here is where I have all of my stuff. So I've got my Tylenol in here. I've got some Kleenex. I have uh, some nail cream. I've got a pair of headphones in here. I've got cough drops. I've got, what else do I have in here? Um, oh, a really fragrant soap that one of my followers, they sent me a whole box of their fragrant soaps. And instead of using them, what I like to do is just kind of scatter them around, put them in my drawers and in different places because I just love their scent. This one is called Walk in the Woods. It is by Essence Earth Skin Care and it's made with essential oils. Anyhow, this one smells like a walk in the woods, so I love it. So the nice thing about this is this is a uh, basically a bag. I got this from Walmart, it was like $12, and I used it during the summer as a purse. But now that the seasons are changing, I have pressed it into service by my bedside where it kind of hides all of the stuff that I use at night, and I don't have to bend over, it's just right there. And I like that. So that's just another little tip. Um, some other things and some provenance of, of some of the furnishings in the room. The bed we got at Ballard Design a million, million years ago. Um, I have always had a Madelais bedspread on here. And recently I wanted it to look a little bit more um, textural, ethnic and African inspired. And my favorite designer on Instagram is probably Serena Crawford. And I wanted a look that spoke to that aesthetic a little bit more. So I got this, um, this quilt and the shams. I got it at Bed Bath & Beyond a little while ago. And I love it because then you can just take a quick nap during the day. And I love the way it looks. And these are uh, interchangeable. So you can use it on one side and then you can use it on another. Now here is, here is my question of the day for you. This is really a throwback to what was more prevalent when I was growing up. And I grew up in a very strict household. And one thing we weren't allowed to do was sit on the beds. Um, I'm, I, to me now that seems a little bit odd, but we weren't allowed to sit on the beds growing up. We had to make our bed every morning. Um, and to me that's just, that's just not practical. So here's my question for you. Do you guys sit on your beds? I know some people don't like to do it because it can break down your mattress over time to sit on the edge. But in general, are you somebody who lounges on your bed or not when you're not sleeping? That's a weird question, I know, but I find it kind of fascinating because it gives insight into how people were brought up and what their practices are. Um, okay, here's another, here's another little tip. So this large European sham and European pillow, I have had in various iterations over the years. So when we first moved into this house, I think my aesthetic was much heavier. It was much more tapestry laden. It was much more kind of old world European. And at that point in time, I had, and you can still see it infused throughout my bookshelves. I really love kind of a deep red, gradations of red, kind of like my friend John Terman, whose home we visited. He likes lots of blue and white. I like lots of red, 
and so there's a, a predominance of red and terracotta colors in my bookshelves. Um, and you can see that kind of infused in here. And that's always been the case, even though I would say I've reworked the formula a little bit. And here's an example. So I used to have these pillow shams. I had a couple of them. And I kept them on this side, which was their intentional side. But I loved the back side of these, which is as interesting to me as the front side. So I still wanted to reuse and repurpose these. So I saw in a magazine, again, it was in that one Southern Living article from Charlottesville, Virginia, in an old, old home where they had a huge pillow like this that was embroidered. So what I did was I just took it to um, someone who, who did this kind of work. She embroidered it for me and then I found these wonderful buttons because this obviously was the access point to put in the pillow in the in, uh, inside. And so what I did was I found some great wooden buttons that then I secured with some leather twine. And I love the look. I love the organic quality it has. And again, it has kind of, um, kind of, oh, an African vibe to it or whatever. Plus, it's large enough so it kind of hides um, any irregularities in the pillow shams and things. So that's one way that I reused, recycled, repurposed what I already had because I am all about um, rethinking and being re-inspired by stuff that you already have by just being observant and looking at other things. So that's, that's an idea. Plus, I am a girl who loves monograms. And how I decided to put my monogram on there and not hubs, I'm not sure, but nevertheless, I love the way it looks. Okay, here, here's an, another idea. Um, you guys know I love to thrift. First of all, let, let me back up a little bit. All of the wicker that you see in here, um, my nightstand, uh, this gorgeous piece right here, this table and Stuart if you don't mind showing behind you that wonderful wonderful chair all of this wicker was in um, a contained glass porch that my parents had in their Indiana home at that time it was white and when I brought it home to use I wanted to paint it and this is a very very deep green it almost reads black I found this color used in a Martha Stewart article. I can't remember the exact name of the color. If I had to do it again, I would probably do it in a really deep espresso brown, but I do still love this green. And then I had from a wonderful online glass company that is so economical, you guys. Um, and what's the name of the glass store? I'm gonna have to come up with it. And if I can, I will try to put a link above, but, I just had a piece of beveled glass cut to fit the table. So it protects it, and I really love that idea. Oh, the company is Dulles Glass, D-U-L-L-E-S, Dulles Glass, and I have used it. They will ship it to you. The shipping costs aren't prohibitive, and I have used it on my my table in my breakfast room downstairs on my library book table a number of different places because I love the look of thick beveled glass on top of something that you're trying to protect. So that's the provenance of the wicker. But here's what I wanted to show you. So these brass candlesticks, I can Honestly, I can't remember where I got them. I think I got them at an antique store or a thrift store many, many years ago. And when I got them, they came with this wonderful form-fitting glass hurricane. Well, I broke one of them. And so I didn't have a matching set anymore. And obviously I still wanted to use this one. So here was my solution that I like just as much, I think. And that was that I, I think I got this at like Home Depot. And it is just a sconce that is intended to hang um, from a light fixture that is suspended. And this would be its positioning on the wall. But look, you guys. It fits perfectly here 
over the top of this candlestick. And then the day that I discovered that one of these votives that has um, oh, striations in it, linear striations in it, the day that I realized you could put that in one of these, oh, it, it reads kind of a glass stone sconce, and it did this wonderful reflective thing, was a happy day. So now I kind of try to repeat this treatment with these wonderful, wonderful, um, sh what would you call that, Stuart, shadowing or uh, just those light reflections. I love the way that looks. Um, so that's just a fun little thing. It, it's those tiny little delights that give me great joy and I think cost nothing but improve the quality of your life exponentially. The grid of these four kind of modern paintings came from Mockingbird Manor, which is an antique store around the corner from me. I got them many, many years ago. Uh, these, on a personal note, these are my parents. This is my daddy who died in 2013. And this is my first mother who died when she was 36. So I keep these near and dear to me, but you'll notice that I don't have a lot of other things just cluttering up this surface. That way, if I'm using it, if I'm working with books or something, then I've got a clean surface. It's also nice if on um, a really cold wintry day or rainy day, and we're just kind of hanging out in bed or if I'm sick or something, then it's a great place where I can have a tray that's got my tea and, you know, tea and crumpets or tea and scones or whatever, and I don't have to find a place to put it. So I made sure that the negative space here was about tray size. And then another thing that I like to do is take things that are utilitarian and practical, but also very beautiful and use them as kind of part of the decor. And here's a couple of examples. So some of the books that I'm reading right now, the ones that I'm referring to frequently that I take off the bookshelf, I keep down here. And I'm currently in love with this book here right now, Curate. Uh, by Linda Gardner. I love this book and you can see why because it's got so many of the organic outdoorsy qualities to it that I really like. So it's been a great point of inspiration for me. So I keep this here at the ready. But I also loved the fact and found it just so pleasing that my tiny little train case that I got from Mark and Graham that looks ever so safari and ever so kind of out of Africa fits perfectly into this little compartment on this table. And I love the way it looks. It's the same color of green. And I love the fact that it's, it's here and just ready to go, you guys. It keeps all of my toiletries and everything for when I travel. So it's here. I don't have to pack. It's ready to go. Very chic. And I love the way that looks. And I like it even better when it gets a little bit more beat up. So here's another example of something that is utilitarian that I think is just so inherently beautiful that I like having it out. And that's my new uh, cowboy boots that my husband got me for Christmas last year. Actually, he got me a gift certificate and we just went and bought them. But these are really, really beautiful, you guys. And so it makes me happy to have them here and look at them. But periodically, if I'm switching things out or whatever, I like having my hunter boots out, my red wellies, my black wellies with the green tops. I will have those out. Um, where you can see them because I just love the fact that they contribute to kind of the outdoorsy English vibe that I like and they're kind of organic and I guess they're part of my garden inspired life and so they speak to the fact that I love to garden. So that's kind of this little area here. This bench I had made the one of the very first Mother's Days after my kids were born my husband bought me um, this antique rug, this oriental rug from, I can't remember, and it had, it had some blemishes on it, but for years I had it in my living room downstairs, and those holes and blemishes were strategically covered by furniture. 
and I loved this rug. Uh, when it got to the point where it was fraying even more and aging even more, that was no longer practical. Plus I wanted kind of a lighter look downstairs, so I had a bench made out of it. And I absolutely love the way it looks and I love the texture and I love the depth of color and it feels to me like the whole composition of this now kind of tells a story. I can almost see mosquito netting over it or something. And as, as a reflection that, it, that the whole thing kind of tells a story to me, you guys, is because my husband and I, we went to Africa on our honeymoon, and so I've got images from that African trip. And yes, we were actually chased by this elephant here. So, it, it's just, oh, it just gives me nice memories. Here's my handsome husband in Africa. Looks kind of like Clark Gable way back when in one of our pup tents. So it, I think it's just a nice way to remember your past without having maybe too much stuff out. So again, my, my theory of not having a lot on side tables and things continues here. I got this little bird's nest fern from Trader Joe's. I loved, I typically don't like the planters that they have there. They look cheap to me, but I loved this. It had kind of, oh, that, oh, I, I don't know, just kind of an ethnic vibe that I really liked. Um, when we bought the house, this faux fireplace had a tiny little wood surround to it. And when we built the bookcases, I had a more formidable, more impressive surround made by a trim carpenter to surround it. And I just really like that. Um, the andirons belonged to my grandparents on my father's side. And I've just kind of pretended with some logs in there. And in the wintertime, we do put candles and such like that to kind of give oh, kind of give that aura of a working fireplace. You guys may remember um, Stuart and I went antiquing not too long ago and I bought this at Antique Avenue on Western and it makes a wonderful um, just thing to hold clothes, dirty laundry. I got this at a thrift store. I think it was all of $3. I love it. I love its shape. Um, and then I just love organic things. These are some dried cow horn okra pods that I grew many years ago, and I think they look fabulous in here. One thing my sweet husband does for me when he goes on trips, uh, when he goes fishing or that type of thing, we're big hikers, and he will always look for really beautiful foraged finds for me. And he went to Wyoming on a trip, and he came back with the most gorgeous bouquet of these beautiful trimmings that came from one of the places that he visited. So I just love that. Uh, here's a picture of me when I was in Africa. This little bowl here, this came from a thrift store. I love its shape. This belonged to my mom. And this is a painting my husband had before we got married of Canyon de Chez. Um, a, a really wonderful place you must visit in the Southwest United States. This wonderful garland that creates these beautiful shadows. This was from part of the Together Weather campaign that I worked with with um, Shop Terrain or Terrain. I absolutely love this and it is my nod to fall decor. So I, I just really love that. The rug here belonged to my mom and the kind of sisal rug underneath it, I had made at a rug store just around the corner from me. You'll note that I don't go, I don't travel very far to get stuff done. Um, one update, you guys. The last time we were all together in my bedroom, <laughs> I showed you guys some thrifted things and I told you about my project that I was going to do with my son Johnny's jeans who lives in Singapore right now and I'm going to work on and I'm still working on it you guys a project 
where I want to make some of these patchwork jeans. So what I was going to do was use these great britches that I got for $5.49 at my local Goodwill store. And they were just wonderful. And at the time I told you that they just didn't fit very well. So I was going to use this fabul fabulous pattern as my inspiration, cut it up and use it for the past for the patches. Um, these were from Harold's. Well, I don't know what I was thinking because these are just too wonderful. And when I tried them on again, maybe it was because I lost a couple pounds <laughs> or who knows. But when I tried them on again, they fit perfectly. So if the other day I was channeling uh, Barbara Stanwyck and Victoria Barkley from the Big Valley, I am now going to channel Meg from Mad Men. Dawn Draper's second wife, was that her name, Meg? Uh, she was really into 70s clothing and everything, and I will show you what this outfit looks like when I style it. So to so many of you who thought it was absolutely blasphemous for me to cut these up and make them into patches, I heeded your advice. I tried them on again, and now they fit like a glove. So I don't know what I was thinking, but I do know that I'm going to have to revisit completely um, my whole patchwork design for these jeans. So that's why we haven't gotten uh, we haven't gotten a follow up a follow up video on that project. So uh, let me kind of just finish up in here with the remains of the day. I guess I got this wonderful bureau at an antique store many, many years ago. It was just basically unfinished pine, I believe. And I covered it with a deep, rich brie wax that I just put on. It was very easy to do. I think I completed it in less than an hour. And then I just have, I don't have a lot of frames around, framed pictures around anymore. Those that I do are really special to me hubs with my two darling little boys fishing and just a few books and things. So there you go. That is kind of a little review of my room. For those of you that wanted a tour of my bedroom, hopefully it gave you a few hints. I'm no designer. I'm no interior or interior stylist or anything, but these are just some things that have worked with, with and for me over time. And hopefully they will also work for you uh, just to give you an idea of how things are, are placed and situated. Maybe I'll save this room for another day. This is my office that's separated by French doors. Some of you who've been in my home before know this, separated by French doors that go into my office. And over here I've got a tiny little writing desk where I make my my list of what I'm going to do tomorrow, what videos Stuart and I need to shoot, and it's underneath yet another Mother's Day gift. My husband is a wonderful shopper for really meaningful gifts, and he got me this beautiful painting that reminded me of my first mom, and it it's just a wonderful thing for me to look at when I write out my to-do list in the morning. So there you go. There is a little tour of my bedroom. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got a couple of tips. Please make sure to answer my question of the day. I'm fascinated about whether or not you sit on your bed and what that does or doesn't say about your upbringing. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Stuart's laughing because he thinks that is such an odd question, um, but I'm a lot older than he is. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. You guys have a great day.